Hi there. In this video, I'm going to go through a few real life examples of functions. And I'm going to illustrate the fact that in each of these cases, a function is really a relationship between two quantities, where one quantity depends upon another. So first of all, we're going to look at a linear function. Now a linear function takes the form y equal to mx plus c, where x is the variable, okay? So that's the variable. The power of x is 1. It can be multiplied by a value m, which is usually the slope or the rate, and c is some constant. So an example of this is a phone bill, where the rate is 20 cent per minute, and the fixed charge is 12 euros. So if you didn't use any minutes at all on your phone bill, you'd still be charged 12 euros. So we're going to show how this function is a relationship between the two quantities. The two quantities being the minutes used and the cost of the bill. So that's in euros. Let's say the bill. Now how do we know which is which? Well, clearly the amount of the bill depends upon the number of minutes. So the bill, we can say, depends on the minutes. And it's usual to put the um, x-axis as the independent variable. So we'll write this as independent variable. And we can plot some of these points. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. As I mentioned, when the number of minutes is 0, we still have to pay 12 euros. When the number of minutes is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, well, when the number of minutes is 1, we pay 12 euros and 20 cent. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What about when we spend 10 minutes on the phone? What would our bill be for that month? Let's say it would be, well, we can rewrite our function as f of x is equal to, the number of minutes is x, so we have to multiply that by 0 0.2, and we have to add on 12. So this is how we calculate our rate. So f of 10, is 0 0.2 times the 10 minutes plus 12, which is 10 times 0 0.2 is 2 plus 12, which is 14. So when we spend 10 minutes on the phone, our bill is 14 euros. Now a linear function gives us a straight line. That's why we call it a linear function. And we can now graph it when we have two points on it. When I said that the m is the rate, it is the the rate for the, the cost per minute. It's the variable cost. And the slope is a 1 in 5 slope, which is this slope here, where m is equal to 1 over 5, or is equal to 0 0.2. So just like I mentioned in the video on plotting a linear function, we have that the uh, slope is the number before the x, and the y-intercept is the constant. So the, here's the, the y-intercept is 12, and the slope is 0 0.2. Now a quadratic function is always of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And in this case, x is the variable. It's the independent variable. And y depends upon it. I'm going to give you an example of this. E.g., uh, let's say, a ball kicked in the air. And let's say... Okay, let's let's draw a quadratic function where the coefficient of x squared is negative. Uh, in fact, I'll just write out a function first and then we'll draw it. So we'll say f of x 
is equal to, oh, let's say minus three x pl uh, plus 12. Now this time I don't, plus, sorry, minus three x squared plus 12 x. So it's minus three is the coefficient of x squared, so it looks like this. I also know that it goes through the point zero zero because when f of when x is zero we just get zero. So in other words f of zero is just zero. Okay, what are my variables in this case? On my x axis I'm gonna call it in fact a t axis. This is typical of a question like this, and it would be perhaps seconds. So after zero seconds, the ball is um, zero meters in the air. So this is a height of ball. And clearly the height of the ball depends on the number of seconds after we have kicked it. So perhaps after one second it has reached, oh let's see, f of one. Minus three times one plus twelve is nine. It has reached nine. And I think you'll find that it uh, it hits the ground again after four seconds. So maybe you've got, uh, well, I don't know, there's the middle. Something like that. After one second, it's reached nine. Nine meters. Okay, the last real life example is the exponential function. And in the exponential function, the variable is a power. So here we have the variable is a power. And in which situations will this occur? Well, one such example is, for example, compound interest. And if you know your formula for compound interest, it says that the value of our investment is equal to our principal multiplied by one plus the interest rate to the power of t. And let's say in this case p, which is a constant, it's the money invested, or well, let's say it's 1200 or something like that. And let's say the rate, the interest rate is 5%. So that would be 0 0.05. So we could rewrite this as a function, perhaps like f of x is equal to 1200 0, 0, multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.05 is 1.05 to the power of x. And you can see that it's clearly in the same format, where A is 1200, B is the, the base, which is raised to a power, and that's 1.05, and our variable, which is the number of years, is the power. That's X. So, for example, we could find after three years, we would say that F of three, the value of our investment, is 1200 times 1 1.05 to the power of 3. Now after 0 years you just get 1.05 to the power of 0 which is 1, so you just get 1200. So if I was to plot this it would look like... Okay, let's plot this. Uh, the whole point of this now is that we have two quantities and one depends upon the other. So which depends on what? Clearly the value of our investment, which we'll say is V or F of X, and that's in euros, depends upon T if we want, we could say number of years. It could be T or it could be X um, and We'd start off at maybe 1200. So again, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, let's say. 
and it won't rise in a straight line it'll actually steadily increase like this this is a typical shape of a exponential curve or we could say an exponential function So in each of the three cases that I've shown you, we have two quantities and one is related to the other. The x-axis is usually given as the independent variable and the y-axis as the dependent variable. So the, remember we have the independent variable down here. Variable. and our dependent variable up here. Okay, that uh, concludes this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll join me for the next one.